morning. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. <clears throat> um, it's a good day today. It's nice. It's overcast. It's cool. Uh, we're going to be having some exciting things. And, and uh, what I want you to remember right now is that um, in the background, you're going to be hearing some construction going on. Uh, I'm at my house again, and the construction is from the house being built directly behind mine. And I think I chose to stay out here because it's going to help with our conversation today. So I hope that you'll um, get the point here in just a little bit. Hey, I'm a preacher. I'm going to use any type of object illustration as I possibly can. Today, our title of this lesson is called Thinking Through Distraction. And uh, I will say that I personally, this has been a problem in my life where I've had to talk and think and work through lots of distraction because I am easily distracted. And what is it that distracts me? Well, a lot of things distract me. Um, useless information distracts me. And I could be, you know, doing, studying for a particular um, sermon idea and all of a sudden I hit four or five different rabbit trails and it is, it's very um, d distracting. I'm just going to use that word. So I thought I could go ahead and tell you a couple things that I've learned in my many years of, of study that have absolutely nothing to do with what it is I'm actually um, preaching about. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with this. And you guys tell me if you guys know the answer. Um, I, there's really no way that you can tell me, but I'm just going to go through this. Okay, how many bricks do you think are in the Empire State Building? Okay, I'm going to be four choices. You've got 850,000, you've got 1 million, um, 5 million, or 10 million. Now I'm going to hop on over to the, to the live stream to see if you know. I'm going to wait just about 10, 15 seconds to see how many of you know how many bricks are in the Empire State Building. Let's just sit here and wait for a second. I wish I had some hold music um, I can hum. All right, Judy says 10 million. Nancy says 10 million. Uh, we've got several people who are saying 10 million. And the answer is... Yes, 10 million. Very good. That's, that's exciting. Okay, here's the next one. Are you ready? Uh, which person was valedictorian of their high school and is also a member of the Church of Christ? All right, you ready? Or was, is or was. Here we go. William Howard Taft, President 22 and 24. George S. Patton. You know George Patton. General, famed general. Brad Pitt. Or the last, Weird Al Yankovic. Hmm. I'll give you just a moment to think about that. The uh, first answer was 10 million. Let's see what the second answer is going to be. Let's see. Taft, Patton, Pitt, or Weird Al Yankovic. I'll give you a moment to uh, work through that. Okay, let's look at see some of the answers. What do you got for me? This is a tough one. Okay, Paul White says Taft. Um, Judy, Paul and Judy say Taft. Hey, you guys did well in the first question. Let's see if you do well on this one. Anyone else? Come on, you can answer. Okay, Don Horner says Taft. All right, Taft. Patton, Sue, and Joel. Sue is just going out and saying Patton. Okay, all right. Well, here's the answer. It may surprise you to know that it's actually Weird Al Yankovic. Um, didn't know if you knew that or not, but a friend of mine called me, he texted me one day, uh, from, he lives in California, and he just texted me and he said, Weird Al just served me communion. <laughs> Thought that was a pretty good text right there. Okay, last one, here we go. How many ridges are there on the edge of a quarter? <laughs> I'm telling you, I, my study has taken me to some very weird distracting places. Ready? Uh, here we go. Uh, 76, 119, 140, 
or 166? Last question. Let's see how many of you know the answer. Um, hey, June Cornelius Allen says two out of two for her. She knows. Two out of two. Okay, here we go. Let's see. 76, 119, 140, or 166. What is your answer? <clears throat> see how you do here. Hmm, this is a tough one, isn't it? This is a tough one. Okay. Fraka says 116. Paul and Judy say 119. Um, Paul and Judy are one for one, one out of two. So you're going to listen to them. You're going to trust them. Don Horner says 140. He is an elder. So, you know, you may want to listen to Don. Jolene says 76. 140. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the answer. The answer on the ridges of a quarter, 119. Um, now, how, what in the world does any of this have to do with anything at all? Well, I would say not much other than to let you know that I oftentimes get very distracted <laughs> and I find myself going in different weird directions. In fact, my, my mind is a compendium for useless information. Um, it seems that those useless tidbits I find I'm hanging on to more than other things. Um, it's, I, I say all this because distraction is very difficult and we're thinking about what it looks like and what it feels like to practice theological reflection. Uh, and that takes intentionality. It takes uh, this ability to, to be really with it, um, focusing primarily on um, you know, your situation, your surroundings, et cetera. And, and, and what I'm finding is that it's not unique to us. Jesus, um, he was approached with distraction on a, on a, a constant basis, I believe. People wanting his attention, people wanting him to do something for him. And, and so I found this, this passage in Luke 9 that I thought really, really um, speaks to this because, because it, if we get distracted from what it is we are here to do, and that is to bless others and to help people think up and to help, you know, ourselves and our, our Christian brothers and sisters think out. If we are, if we are supposed to do that, there are oftentimes so many things that could pull us in other directions that make us more introspective and to think more about ourselves than others. And, and, you know, I, I preached this series on, on uh, distract, distraction several years ago, and there was a book that I was reading and kind of going through called Preaching in the Age of Distraction. And I'm not lying, it took me a year to finish that thing. Is that irony? Maybe coincidence? But I find that whenever, if, if, if you know what your mission is, if you know why you're doing what you're doing, then you can reorient re, uh, quickly and get right back to where you were supposed to be going uh, to begin with. And theological reflection, uh, so, sometimes if, if we're not intentional about thinking through those areas of our life, uh, those things we're ingesting, then I think we could really spend more of our life on the distractions than we can on our true mission, which is to, to bless the world and uh, to seek out those people who need love and attention and, and help and care. So Luke 9, I'm going to go through this really quickly. Luke 9 is uh, this moment whenever Jesus gets trans, he, he's transformed, you know, transfigured. And then there's this moment whenever he knows it is time. I've got to go to Jerusalem. So this is what he says. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messenger resolutely. Basically, that, that, that phrase means that um, his, the actual image is that your jaw clenches. You know those movies? Uh, whenever you see the guy and he, you know he's serious whenever he gets a close-up on his jaw and he just clenches, you know. That's Jesus right there. His jaw's clenching. His face is set. He is solid. And he is determined to go to Jerusalem. But the way forward is fraught with distraction. As he sent messengers on ahead, he went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. Remember, Samaritans do not like uh, Jews. Jews and they 
they uh, have issues with him because they know he was going up to the temple. They did not want to welcome him. Uh, when the disciples, okay, so that's a distraction in, in and of itself. He was supposed to go through through Samaria and it didn't work. So now what does he do, right? He's got to do plan B, a distraction. When the disciple James and John saw this, they asked him, Lord, you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Okay, that's another distraction. How many people in our life are always, and I'll say the words, hell-bent on making other people pay for their disrespect? How many people do we know are so focused on, on making sure other people know that they're wrong when they're wrong that they're not focused on doing good. They're just focused on you know, doling out justice. And whenever, whenever G- Jesus was resolutely set to go and give himself away, and what he found was that people kept distracting him. Then as he's walking along, he sees this man who says to him, hey, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And then Jesus replied, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me first go bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another man says, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. You have these three or four people who are, who are coming up to Jesus. And they want to follow, but they are filled with distractions. Now you would say, well, burying a dead, one of your dead is not a distraction. That's, that's you know, just respect. There's a, there's a larger context here. Um, there, are, there are some people, me included, whenever I say, I'm ready to follow you wherever. Um, how many times do we walk, 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 and then we just kind of get distracted? And then we, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. Walk, walk, walk. Oh yeah. Well, I need to go do this real quick. Uh, How many times in our life does our situation, does our circumstances, do our responsibilities and job, other things, distract us from doing what it is we need to be doing for God? Now, how many times is there a person that we need to help, that we need to talk to, that we need to reach out to, but in our mind we say, well, I would, but I've got to do this for work. I would, but I'm late for church. I would, but I, I, how many times do we do that? Then Jesus, he, he responds here in verse 62. And he says, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Now there's a, there's a story about Elisha. I don't know if you remember Elisha. He was a prophet in the Old Testament. Elijah was his, uh, Elisha was Elijah's protege. And Elijah found Elisha. And, you know, Elisha was, a, was a, from a wealthy family. And when Elijah found him, he, um, you know, told him, you need to follow me. But Elisha was, was, was plowing the fields. And back then, to have more than one animal was, you were, you were wealthy. But he had several animals, like several uh, bulls or whatever, and then he had a, a plow. And what Elisha did is he says, he basically said, hang on a second. I've got to do something first. Now, in this moment, you could say, oh, well, that's a distraction. He's doing just what Jesus is telling these men not to do. But what Elijah did, uh, what Elisha did, was he actually went and all the bulls that he had and all and, and that plow, he burnt the bulls as a sacrifice and he burnt the wood on, on the wood of the plow, meaning that his way forward was going to be completely and solely dependent on God because that was his one means, his sole means of taking care of his family, of his, of his parents, of, of himself. And he basically burned it all at the foot of Jesus, I mean, at the, at the foot of God, and just so that he could serve God with everything that he had. And so Jesus is kind of hearkening back to that, saying, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for, the, for service in the kingdom of God. You know, just as Jesus set resolutely his face towards Jerusalem, knowing that he had a mission, he had a job, knowing that that's who we're following 
my encouragement to you this week is to set your face resolutely to helping and serving others as well. And, and, and through that, what we'll find is that, is that the more we we set in our minds, our determination to follow, to think theologically, to make sure that we know what's right and wrong, to, to, to try to be discerning of people's situations, to try to be graceful and merciful, slow to anger, compassionate. The more we try to do those good things that God has called us to do, the, and I'm telling you, the more distractions are going to come. So, so how do you think through that distraction? Well, you've got to be very intentional. You have to be very focused and resolute. Um, and it has to be a moment to where, to where even though there are lots of things going on around you, you know, like right here, there's the wind and it's blowing. There's a little bird feeder right out there and there's birds all over it. There's people over here sawing and, and hammering and putting up bricks on this. There's so much to see and to do. And it's not, and there's about to be sawing here in just a second. And it's not to say that you're, that there's not going to be distraction, but how do we think through them? We've got to be focused. You've got to have Jesus not as a part of the conversation, but Jesus has to be the conversation. He has to be just like it says in, in uh, Numbers chapter 6. I mean, uh, Deuteronomy 6. You've got to tell the story. You've got to talk about it. When you lie down, when you get up, whenever you um, walk along the road, talk about it with your children, with your family. Talk about it with your friends. And it's not that you have to be somebody who is always, you know, hitting people over the head with the Bible. But people need to know the hope you have. So if something good happens, attribute it to God and thank God for it. People may think you're a little odd because you're always talking about God. I think that's a great thing. And I think what's, what, what, what people will find is that if, if you're authentic and genuine and you really do want to love and serve God with everything you are, then they'll see that your life is not um, a facade, but your life is real. Your love is real. If you can just plow your way through a distraction here and there, and recognize them when they come. It's not to say that sometimes we can't stop and hang out a little bit, but it is to say that if your distractions keep you from serving, keep you from giving your life over, keep you from blessing people, then we need to get rid of them. These are the things I'm learning and <laughs> paying attention to every day. So that's my encouragement to you. Think through the distractions today because I think what you'll find is that is that the more uh, resolute you are, the more uh, you'll, you'll experience God's power in the midst of your everyday life. And the more, I believe, you'll be able to deal and, and control your distractions rather than be controlled by them. So that's my encouragement to you today. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to hang out with the comments and just say hello. God, thank you so much for the day. Thanks for those people watching, whether it's live or on replay. Help us, Lord, to be your people. Help us to be resolute in helping others and seeking your face and serving you and giving our lives away for the sake of others because we know that you have done that to us. Help us to be kind. Help us to be helpful. And I pray overall, Lord, we are filled with love for you and for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much. It's so good to see y'all. I'm going to kind of look and hang out. You know what I love? I love people having conversations in the middle of, you know, our comment section. I think that that's great. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like people are, um, how do I say that? They're kind of like passing notes in church. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I'm, paused. All right. Well, hey, you guys have a great day and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye.